Dear students, I am back again with another lesson on uh, sociological theories. This is part of the chapter on sociological theories and sociological methods. It is meant to be a simple introduction to sociological approaches. We are following the syllabus Cambridge O Level Sociology 2251. If you have a look at Unit 1 Theory and Methods, in the very first section, you are expected to understand how do different sociologists interpret society. Structuralist and interpretive approaches, the individual, identity and society. How different views, functionalist, Marxist, feminist, on conflict and consensus create alternative perspectives. Now this section is quite a tricky one. Uh, sometimes difficult to understand. That's why I'm doing it at the end of this unit because it will make more sense to you now after we have discussed a lot of these aspects during this course on research methodology. You will have a very brief introduction here because all these issues are again considered in all the different chapters that you'll be doing during the course of this study for O-level sociology. Let me start by asking a few questions. Sociology usually helps to think about society, to understand society. Here are a few questions that you should ask yourself. Is there one single way of understanding? Is our thinking a result of common sense only? Am I too young to understand what is a theory? Or do only very intelligent people operate with theories? You might already have some answers to these questions, but you will certainly get more as we go through this lesson. A simple answer to this question is no. Let us find out why. Let me now ask you a few simple concrete questions and you will understand why there is not a single way of understanding. Do we all agree on the following? That Liverpool is the greatest football team in England? That USA is the greatest country in the world? That poor people have themselves to blame? Or that school is fair and equal? Or the media is objective? Ask this question to the class. And you will see how many different answers you will get. Obviously, the answers to these questions may be a big no. Therefore, there is not a single way of understanding. We are aware that a lot of events takes place every day. But for every single event, there are multiple explanations. Get around and find out, ask people, you will find several explanations. Some people will give one, another person will give another explanation, there will be one, two, three explanations, maybe more. You hear it every day on the media when people keep on arguing with each other. Which one is right? And where do these explanations come from? These are the questions that we should ask ourselves. How do we think about society and social behavior? Obviously, we all have different beliefs. We have our own thinking, own values, own beliefs. And these beliefs help us to, or to produce different explanations. In this presentation, you will see there may be belief one, explanation one, belief two, explanation two, belief three, explanation three, and so on. Where do these beliefs come from? Our beliefs are often shaped by our belongings to certain groups. We all belong to different groups, different social classes, different ethnic groups, different gender and therefore our beliefs are very often colored by our belonging to a particular social class. If you are upper social class or a lower social class we won't think in the same way. If we belong to a particular ethnic group we will always think in terms of that group or if you are either a man or a woman 
that also will influence the way we think, our beliefs. And all these are very often unverified because they are based on the knowledge of a few events that we might have come across or that we know about. And therefore they are not necessarily verified scientifically. And this is what we call the common sense theory. We, use, we might use the word theory for instance, but it is into inverted commas, but it is not necessarily a theory. What is this common sense? The common sense is what we feel we know just because it is often repeated. Very often we have a tendency to believe that we know what things are. We know reality. Why? Because so many people are talking about it. Because we have read it on the newspaper somewhere. But very often these information are written quickly based on the opinion of a few and not verified but yet they influence our thinking about society and social life. What is common sense theory? It's written between inverted commas because they are not really theories. They are beliefs which are unverified and which make up our common sense understanding and which shape our explanation of society. So we should be careful of them. What about sociological explanations? We are going to see why we can rely on sociological explanations and how different they are from common sense explanations. Compared to the common sense understanding, sociological knowledge are based on evidence gathered through various data collection techniques. And this is what we have been doing in the last a number of lessons that we have taught on sociological methods and data collection. And therefore, sociological knowledge are verified. They're based on the knowledge of a large number of events or on intensive study. And this is what forms the sociological theory based on evidence that can be verified. We did emphasize this all the time when we're looking at sociological research. And obviously, like any form of knowledge in the world, we don't have a simple or a single explanation for everything that happens. So we have multiple theories. We have theory one, theory two, theory three. We're going to look at each one of them separately. But you should ask yourself, which one is right? The answer is each one to some extent. And where do these explanations come from? Usually they come from research and evidence from the field. And these explanations were provided to you when we looked at research methodology. I will now illustrate how we can give multiple explanations of one aspect or one area of social life and I will take education for that purpose. There are multiple ways in which we look at the contribution of education. Let's take one view which says that education is an important institution. It performs essential functions of socialization, empowering the labor force for the economy, and provides people with the opportunity to attain higher positions in society. This is one way of looking at education. Let's now look at another set of opinion on the same context of education. Some people argue that education benefits a few. Those who have the support of the family and the means to obtain admission to the best schools. And therefore, not everyone benefits equally. The dominant classes, that is those who come from the privileged categories, 
get the most out of education. And therefore the school and the curriculum favor those privileged few in society. So you see this is a very different way of looking at the contribution or the ways in which the same institution education functions. Let's take another view. I told you earlier that there are people of different social classes. There might also be people of different gender who might view education differently. So we have a third view which says education has been provided to women yet they are taught to accept a subordinate position that is an inferior position. Though they achieve success we are all aware that girls do better in schools yet it does not necessarily assure them a high position in society as adults. This is another view which is also equally true but different from the previous two. Let us consider a fourth view. This one looks at what happens inside the school. In schools, teachers tend to favor some students. When teachers label someone as intelligent or less intelligent, the label tends to stick and acts as motivators or deterrent. Children tend to accept such labels and act accordingly. Four views on education. Obviously, you might ask me, which one is right? Well, you must have realized that there is not a single explanation. There are multiple explanations and each one of them is right to some extent. Let us now look at the different views again one by one and understand which theories we were illustrating. In the first one, we looked at education as an important institution which has got important functions. It contributes to the society, to the benefit of society and all the individuals as a whole. This way of looking at society, the contribution of an institution and how it benefits the society and the individual. In other words, the role of institutions, we call it the functionalist view. Functionalists come from the word function, which means roles of an institution. We also refer to it as a consensus approach. Consensus means agreement, where there is an agreement on how the society and its institutions function for the benefit of society as a whole where people feel that the institution is performing for their benefit and for the benefit of their society. In the second view, we found that not everyone benefits from education and other institutions equally. Education benefits a few dominant groups Schools do not serve everyone equally and therefore this is a view that looks at how some groups, which we call the dominant groups, are better served by the institution of education. And this is what we call the Marxist view or the conflict view. It explains how there is a conflict between different groups and institutions of society come very often to serve the interest of those who are more dominant, those who are more powerful in society. We also looked at a third view. In this one, it was clear that not everyone benefits especially in a society which is divided between men and women. You are aware of patriarchy, the rule of men, and this is what is highlighted here. It seems that women benefit less from education. It seems that women learn to develop a subordinate attitude and obtain a subordinate position in society. Even when they are intelligent and they had performed well in the school days, 
they don't end up by getting dominant positions in society. And looking at it from women's perspective, we consider this as a feminist view, which highlights that education does not necessarily benefit all women in the same way. What about the fourth view? Here we looked at teachers' attitudes, which make a difference. Teachers as individuals make children develop either a positive or a negative image of themselves. And therefore, we are looking at how people interpret their own behavior in a context where they are influenced by someone else. Here, the teacher influences the behavior of the child. So here we're looking at what goes on in the classroom, how each one interprets the behavior of the other and how this influences behavior or outcome in the education system. This is called an interpretive view. You have looked at it earlier, the interpretive, the anti-positivist approach, and this is an example of interpretive approach in sociology. To summarize, we looked at one institution, education, so as to understand the different views and perspectives in sociology. In other words, how sociologists interpret or look at society. We had the functionalist view, which is also called the consensus approach, which looks at how the individual and society benefit as a whole, as if there is an agreement, a consensus in society. We also looked at the Marxist view, which is also called the conflict view, because it looks at the conflict between the dominant group and the subordinate group and how the dominant groups benefit in society. Next, we consider the feminist view, that is, we look at society from the point of view of gender differences. How institutions benefit men to the detriment of women. And finally, we looked at the interpretive view, how people interpret each other's action and influence human behavior. By now, as students of sociology, you should also understand what is the aim of sociology. Sociologists are not interested in finding uh, right answers. As you understand, there is no right answer in the world. There are different ways of looking at the same thing. So therefore, we should understand how different people from different contexts and different groups interpret and view society. And therefore, we should always keep an open mind and we should not take sides. Let us look at the four questions we started off with right at the beginning of this lesson. So by now you should understand that there is no one single way of looking at or understanding social behavior. There is the functionalist, the Marxist, the feminist, the interpretive sociologist who look at the same problem, but they have different viewpoints. The next question was whether you should rely on common sense. No, probably to some extent. But when you are doing a scientific study, you should look at knowledge that have been tested and verified. Common sense is often not verified. The next question was, am I too young to understand what is a theory? Obviously no. It is good to start early and build a good basis for knowledge. And the last question was, do only very intelligent people operate with theories? Obviously no. Now you know about different ways of understanding different theories, try and see how you could apply them in other areas of social life you encounter. I took an example from education, the same will apply to 
whatever other areas like family, politics, religion, or whatever you are understanding or you are studying. What is a social theory then? In short, it is a general account of human behavior derived from careful understanding of human society. It provides the framework for understanding and analysis. It is generally acceptable as one of the multiple ways of viewing society. It is not a hard and fast view, but it holds true under certain conditions. Therefore, it holds true as long as it is not falsified. Your views will depend on which theory you plug into. If you plug into functionalist, you have a functionalist view. If you plug into the Marxist, you'll have a Marxist view. Or the same for feminist or interpretive views. This is what we wanted you to understand, that there are multiple theories and your views will depend on which theory you adhere. We do not have anything called truth. We only have multiple realities and multiple truth. We have reached the end of this lesson. You can reach me on omvarma2011 at gmail.com. You will be able to catch up with all the videos on the search methodology chapter on our YouTube channel. Go to YouTube and then find MI Hub. May I remind you that some of the images taken in this presentation are from open sources, upslash.com, pixels.com and freeimages.com. It was nice talking to you and helping you. We'll meet sometime soon. From me, it's goodbye.